Hey, greetings and welcome to the Mount Rushmore Podcast. My name is Jeff, and I'm joined as always by my good buddies, Richard. Hello. And Michael. Howdy. Uh, these gents, uh, you know what they do. They like to debate and deliberate the most ubiquitous aspects of hundreds of topics so far. And I can't even dream that we haven't done dreams or dreaming yet. But this is the Mount Rushmore of dreams or dreaming. Who chose it? I was shocked too. It was mine. This is one of my choices. Uh, I think it uh, stemmed out of, um, for one of the first times, uh, my son, Felix, uh, like really explained a dream he had. Oh, wow. Which he's like five and a half. And like, you know, kids are like, I had this dream and then they just make something up. Like, I don't think they really... <laughs> Kids are just, just, it, just these liars. It's permission <laughs> just to just to freestyle for a while. Just gave me the entire plot of follow that bird. Yeah, <laughs> but he actually came out and he, uh, it was like a Saturday morning, and he actually like described a dream a dream that he had in like such vivid detail that it was totally a dream and not just him like waking up and playing with an action figure. And I thought, oh my god, I have I've had these reoccurring dreams. Um, that are kind of uh, pastiches that I think will like f fall into a category. And I thought, oh my God, I bet Rich everybody dreams. Everybody has these crazy dreams and things you can relate to. And I thought, oh, uh, just to uh, have like kind of like a personal sort of thing, but also that kind of applies to everyone, I thought would be just uh, an interesting topic for us. All righty. All righty. So thanks for picking the topic. Richard, thanks for starting. What's your All right. Favorite? So my first choice is lucid slash semi-lucid dreams. Ooh, cool. Which I don't know if you guys have ever had one. It's weird. I have had a couple in my life I, I, where I've known that I was in the dream and was able to manipulate the things that were happening inside of the dream. Um, one of them, I was at a, like a car race and I realized, wait a second, I'm in a dream. And I can make the cars flip and then flip back into place. It was very strange. But mainly what I have, I would call them semi-lucid dreams. Because what happens to me is I'll be in the middle of a dream and either the dream will start to get repetitive or boring or start to turn a little dark. And in the dream, I'll go, wait that's, a second. That's, that's just the podcast, Richard. Oh. <laughs> I, I wish I could do what I do in my dreams, which is to say, wait, this is getting a little weird. Let me just stop it. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'll just wake up. Hmm. So I can wake myself out of a dream by telling myself, hey, this is a dream. I don't, I'm, I'm done with this dream now. Time to move on. And then I will wake up. Which sounds great because you don't have to deal with like, a, like bad dreams or nightmares or anything like that. The flip side is, is I'm waking up several times every night. Because I have very story-driven dreams. Like, my dreams have very thorough kind of plots to them. And if I hit a wall where I have no more plot, like a storyteller who's run out of story, I just wake up. So I'll wake up several times a night because I wake myself out of a dream. Hmm. Hmm. Because you run out of narrative? Yes. Wow. Yes, you're, like Dan said. you're like Danielle Steele. Yeah, basically, Girl. or I'm like Michael Scarn from The Office. Yeah. Where, so <laughs> Threat level midnight. <laughs> yeah, everything ends with, now I have a gun. <laughs> that sort of thing. So when my dreams hit that stage, it's it's time for me to wake up, baby. Winfield, you ever had a lucid dream? Not that I recall. I probably yeah. have, but I don't have like a, um, I don't have like a very distinct memory of being able to manipulate a dream like that, no. I, I'm sometimes I'm aware I'm in a dream and I wake up, but it's different from being like, well, guess who's flying now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I've, I think I've maybe twice. And as soon as I realized it was a dream and I could, that I was now, you know, the author of my <laughs> fate, the fun detector that is my brain woke me up. <laughs> like, oh, great. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So um, Richard, is it scary? Is it, Ex exhilarating is it what's the which what's part the of feeling? which part of it? it's just the the semi-lucid part when you're kind of like realizing it's realizing it's yeah a dream. yeah it's kind of annoying 
more than anything else, to be, be honest with you. I mean, the few times where I've been able to control it enough, where I've been able to control what's happening in my dream, yeah, that's kind of fun. Mm -hmm. But the ones where it's like, okay, time to wake up now because this dream got boring. Mm -hmm. Just like I said, just the the, the, the <laughs> third time in the night that you wake up after having done that, it's like, God damn it. I would rather have slept through a boring dream than get woken up at three in the morning because I didn't. Because the inner critic in me didn't like the direction this, this scene was going. <laughs> the tropes that were uh, uh, being rehashed. Okay, Winfield, what's your first choice? Uh, my first choice is uh, The Nightmare. Um, but I have a very specific nightmare that has stayed with me ever since um, I was probably eight or ten years old, something like that, where usually, like, you know, these dreams, they come and go. You remember bits and pieces of them. But one of like the few dreams that have kind of stayed with me ever since I was like this little kid uh, was this one where I was being like chased through a mall, uh, you know, like an eighties mall. And there was some sort of creature following me and it was going like up and over things and under benches and around, uh, I don't know, people in the mall and being dodged by things until finally I had to trap this thing in like a washing machine somewhere inside this mall. Yeah. And I don't think it relates to anything, but for whatever reason, this is this one dream that I remember as a kid. There's another one that I have um, uh, from my childhood, but um, that I, I don't know what it's related to. I think it's just one of those pure nightmare, scary, being pursued sort of things that I don't know for whatever reason, I don't know why it's stayed with me for so long. And I think dreams hmm. for whatever reason they uh they can have something become so poignant other you know just the pure terror of it which is so strange that your brain does this thing when you're resting that your brain produces these horrible situations especially for a kid that live with you for the rest of your life now i'm not scared of malls i'm very good at doing laundry so it's not like i have <laughs> like uh 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 a fright of that or being chased but um it's just one of those things where just this this monster vivid thing that ends in this banal situation but maybe it's something that as a kid is like accessible as a trap um has just stayed with me like my entire life and i don't know why mm -hmm. some nightmares do that i don't know why some you wake up and then 10 minutes later everything fades away and you're like i have no idea what i dreamed about too Ah, it's been 35 years. Wow. Um, that's one thing I think is pretty amazing about dreams is its ability to, uh, obviously it's all happening in your brain. So there's a shortcut to that emotional place. So you could be in a field of daisies, <laughs> but it's the scariest thing possible. It doesn't have to really do all the things that a movie or a novel or something has to do to, uh, to match the setting to the feeling. So, yeah, there's That's no there's no nerd good. there critiquing your like dream setup. Like, uh, yeah. I don't know if the then, you know, Richard's talking about narrative. Uh, you know, sometimes they just don't. Sometimes they're just this mishmash of mm -hmm. images, and it's I think it's so wild that the brain actively creates these stories to yeah. What is the biological purpose of that? You know, what is this thing that we've developed over the eons to uh not only you know keep your mind busy but like frighten you while you're sleeping mm -hmm. like when you're trying to rest it's like uh guess what but you're <laughs> you're eight and uh it's no uh you're going down i have had instances where i have been in a new environment and it has been very stressful and i've heard people say before that dreams are this way of we don't know why dreams happen but some speculated as a way of you uh, rehearsing your behaviors or feelings or working through things. And I, I, I lived and worked on a cruise ship for a year plus. And I remember one time realizing I've never, I never had a dream ever of being on a cruise ship. None of the people I was working with were ever appeared in my dreams. It was highly stressful. Mm. It was a huge change. It created, created a lot of, uh, of trauma but not once did I ever have any kind of dream I had to do with a cruise ship. It was 
kind of bizarre. I did. Do you ever have work dreams? Anybody have a work dream? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. I My peeve is that I dream that I'm a work at work and I'm doing a full day's work. Like I'm oh, at no. work for <laughs> Like I, I, I had, I had a dream that basically I was working for like a full day and at like five o'clock, I went in to talk to my boss about something. And I hear this like eh, 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 in the office. And I said, what, what's that? And he goes, I don't know. And I'm like, it sounds like my alarm at home. And then I realized, oh, it is my alarm waking me up to go to work because oh, no. I, <laughs> I call uh, in sick at that point. That's what you absolutely should call in sick. I did this already. <laughs> I did this. I wrote the, I I wrote something. I wrote the gorilla analysis for the banana account. Wait, that wasn't real. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Okay. All right, uh, Richard. What's your second one? All right. So my second choice is uh, teeth dreams. A very specific type of dream Ooh. that I get from time to time where I have a dream that my uh, teeth are falling out. Oof. And the reason that I'm, the reason that this is uh, so so uh, frustrating for me is because I actually did have a chipped tooth one time. Like I ate a bagel and I chipped a oh. tooth. And it made me feel like, I actually felt like I was in a teeth dream where my teeth oh, were wow. falling out. It was very frustrating. And... I get them every once in a while, and I, there's there's a lot of debate about what they could possibly mean. It could mean that you feel it could be just depression. It could be have something to do with, um, you know, feeling inadequate about your looks, which would me. I mean, I, that couldn't be the case. But there's a number of things that it could possibly be, but there's not one like it's not like it's an anxiety dream. But they don't know. It's hard to say exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. But I just keep having them like like several times a year, and they're just really the idea of like you know pulling on a tooth and it just pops out. That's, it's it's your that's, it's your brain telling you to yeah, it's your brain telling you to stop eating the everything bagel with like the bits of concrete <laughs> in it too. Yeah, <laughs> there's that also. Uh, I've had I've definitely had that. I've had like the weird stress teeth dream where it's just like. Um, yeah, the, the teeth falling out thing is just horrible because you know that uh, I think it signifies very, um, it's weird, uh, you know, childhood, you have this whole part of your childhood where your teeth fall out, but there's a promise of new teeth. Yeah, they're falling out. So you're growing up and you're getting older. And then you get to a point when you're like an adult, it's like, Oh, no, if my teeth come out, this is the worst thing. Actually, there's nothing behind these teeth. <laughs> the only thing that's behind these teeth is like an expensive medical dental bill that, or like, you know, there's, yeah. you're going under the knife or there's putting a bridge work or crown. Like there's a part where like, I'm sure that there's like childhood teeth falling out is fun. You're like, Oh, I'm so excited to lose my teeth. And then as an adult, I get a buck like, from the tooth fairy. Yeah. You get, you get yeah, paid no, out. No, yeah. I don't get any money when my teeth fall out in these dreams. I just get, get horrifying mm -hmm. visuals and, and feelings that I have to deal with when I wake up. Mm-hmm. Maybe I need to go to the dentist more often. Maybe it's something simple like that. I'm concerned about going to the dentist, though, because I have tartar. I'm afraid that if they get rid of the tartar, that all my teeth are going to fall out. Like the tartar <laughs> is the only thing that's holding my teeth. In place. <laughs> so maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know. I I have to say that, um, yeah, that those kind of dreams are the worst. And I think I also, I have that, that I have had that dream, and I also have that the waking experience whenever I eat an egg salad sandwich from a questionable deli, because I always right. feel like I'm going to bite into a shell at any point, and that is the same your teeth falling out kind of kind of feeling. You know what I hate more than uh, nightmares or like creepy dreams are just people who think they know how to analyze dreams because they read a book from the oh, remainder right. shelf at Barnes and Noble. Mm -hmm that had stars and, and moons and things on it. And, and that is just annoying um, because sometimes you're just sleeping with your mom and it doesn't mean anything. Okay. <laughs> Too far. Okay. Um, no, but I, you know, like tooth dreams yeah. or things like that. It's stuff you're worried about money or you have anxiety about your job or you have whatever. Yeah. Some of them are pretty straightforward. You can kind of guess what they are, mm -hmm. you know, but some, a lot of them are just, 
I've always been, I've always told had people tell me dreams are just your brain going crazy for a few hours. So don't try to read too much into it. Yeah. Have I'm interested to know if either of you have ever had closure, like solutions in dreams or mm -hmm. emotional um kind of um a denouement of something in your life or a, a, you know, like I was just on looking at a YouTube video where Paul McCartney says, I think yesterday or something came to him in a dream. And right. like nothing, no, no, no million, multi-million dollar songs have ever come to me. Yes. In no, nothing dreams. that useful has ever happened to me in a dream. Yeah. No, the closest thing yeah. recently Jeff, was that joke or was that, that dream I, 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 I texted you about, about C-3PO and Mad Libs oh, yeah. and R2-D2 and like, <laughs> that's it. Just dumb stuff. Dumb stuff. Yeah. That's yeah. That's the kind of thing I wake up, I turn on my wife and go, tortilla frisbee? Is this anything? Tortilla frisbee? <laughs> Is this anything? You should go to sleep. Go to sleep, you idiot. Okay, Winfield, what's your second one? Uh, my second one is the dream that directly reflects something in your life. And this was one, this other one from when I was a kid, where I had this dream um, where I was, um, me and my dad, my sister had this little apartment after my parents got divorced. And I was sharing a room with my dad. We had like bunk beds and my sister had her own room. And in my dream, I opened up this closet and it was like a Scrooge McDuck avalanche of like gold coins and money coming out of it <laughs> but it was horrifying and it was just as you get coming and coming being drowned in these in these coins <laughs> this money this I mean, it was an awful situation i think was to reflect that we were pretty poor at the time my dad was like out of work or he had quit his job because he was depressed because my parents were getting divorced and it was just so stressful and i just remember just so vividly like crawling through this thing that in theory should be a a problem solver but was just like reflected of like this little closet that i shared with my dad in this little bedroom that i shared with my dad in this like stressful time when we were i was like you know 12 years old it was just like everything was uh you know my dad bless him did everything he could but it was just so hard at the time and uh it's just one of those things that like has just one of those stayed with me but even then I knew, and looking back, I knew it was a hundred percent about our situation exactly. And mm -hmm. it's funny when that happens, when your brain is just like, um, as, you know, sometimes it's crazy or you're being chased by a monster. And sometimes it's just like, this is what your reality is right now. And you're going to be dreaming about it. And you're going to be try to process your daily life um, in some way. Mm-hmm. Well, that's that's fascinating. When even even as a young person, you knew it's a nail on the head thing. There's no it's yeah. on the nose. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes dreams are. I mean, obviously, it's uh, you know, with the gold coins and everything, it's not exactly literal, but it's practically. It could have been dollar bills and a stack mm -hmm. of whatever, but it was just happened to. I didn't put. I didn't have like spats and like a cane. And <laughs> Okay, hey, this is our halftime when we implore you, the uh, listener or watcher, to go and avail yourself of the glory that is the Mount Rushmore podcast website and the back episodes that live everywhere you get podcasts. So go listen, download, rate, review. Do people download podcasts anymore? You just kind of, you just kind of listen to them. I guess they, they come to your. I don't know if they stream. Did they ever even download? I don't know. I, I do, but that's because do I don't you? want to like waste data on it. I only have like okay. my thing set up to download, like through yeah, Wi-Fi. Wi -Fi. Wi -Fi. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, print it out, if like Michael mm. does, print it out uh, sure. uh, on uh, the tractor paper printer. You um, hire someone to read it for you. That's in a better voice than us. Trust who me, knew? that that improves yeah. things. That would be great. Sir Patrick Stewart has been hired by Elon Musk to read the Mount Rushmore podcast. Uh, the best voice reading the best podcast. Okay, so yeah, we are back then, and we're going to listen to what uh, Richard uh, is uh, choosing for his third choice. Third choice is overly vivid dreams. Now, this is a little bit different than lucid dreams. I'm talking more about dreams that just feel like hyper- realistic maybe you don't yeah. know you're in the dream but they just feel like super real 
And I, I have a very specific example of this. This was, you know, probably nine or 10 years ago, I was having trouble sleeping. So I got prescribed some uh, Ambien. And apparently with me and Ambien, that leads to really, really, really vivid dreams. And I had one dream where I was walking down the street and something happened and a car came at me and I had to dive to get out of the way of the car. The next thing I knew I was on the ground having bounced off of my end table after having, oh. after having leapt from the bed to the floor. Wow. And hit my end table on the way in and how I didn't break a rib or something. I have no idea, but my wife basically said that she just saw me sort of all of a sudden jerk up and, and, and just bolt off the bed. Wow. So I didn't take Ambien much after that. That was, that was a sign that even if I had meant getting a little bit less sleep, maybe it was time to try a different pill. Holy smokes. Yeah. I, like I said, I, I distinctly remember that there was a car that was coming for me and I had to jump to get out of the way. Next thing I knew, I, I was like a, a split second before I hit the ground. That must have been when I hit the end table or whatever it is. That's the, the thing that I hit. Yeah. So dreams, when dreams can be dangerous. Richard, are you, so, and do you believe that sequentially the motion happened or the dream happened first? I think the dream happened first. Okay. I think I had the dream and I, I knew I had to get out of the way of this car and somehow my I was okay. able to manifest that physically in 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 the real world. Okay. You know, you, you're like you one hear of, about... you're like one of those there's one of those people like wearing like the VR headset that are just like yes. running away from like whatever <laughs> whatever thing they're doing or like they're jumping at their, their TV screen. You don't running know into a wall. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I'm a, I'm, I'm a dog that you see whose like legs are moving. You're like, oh, look, you must be dreaming of chasing a car. That was me, except me we was jumping to get out of the way of the car. <laughs> I had a uh, the most bizarre dreamy thing I ever had was a thunderstorm, and I had a whole, uh, I you know I think the what seemed like the dream took a day or so, and it was a it was a movie plot about nuclear a nuclear war, and. I awoke to a lightning, sorry, I guess a thunder clap and there was a thunderstorm going on. So I'm not sure, uh, but in, in the dream, the narrative built up to me seeing a mushroom cloud of a, of a nuclear bomb wow. going off. So what I believe may have happened is this chemical collection of synapses or whatever that a dream is consisting of heard that thunderclap then created this what i perceive to be a day long experience of a dream it incepted that fully fully into my brain in that second or i don't know i don't know i i, I find that fascinating when how 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 we may perceive dreams as happening in in a chronology or as right. to have the uh the um attribute of time when the reality is it's just, it's just a chemical that, that, yeah. that happens that you assemble the whole cloth. So, um, okay, 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 okay. Uh, Michael, what's your third? My third is the school dream. Uh, specifically oh, yeah. for me, it's always the same sort of thing where I've arrived at like the final of like a college class realizing or like a high school class, realizing I haven't attended a single class all semester long. And I know that's not how it was as a person. I know it's almost physically impossible, especially in like high school. But just this feeling of like, huh, I have no idea what cl- class this is, what I'm sp- supposed to be have, have studied, what I'm supposed to have learned. And suddenly I'm here and I have to take a test and I have no memory of ever am I registered for this class? <laughs> why am I, why am I here? Why is uh, school has such a particular way of, I mean, it's with us for so long through our uh, childhood and our adolescence and then in, for a lot of us into like adulthood. And it's this thing that is like this extra time pressure and you still got to be there for certain things. And then you get to college and maybe it doesn't matter. You know, some of the classes you're taking, maybe they're not that important. But man, these dream the dream of just having 
completely missed out on something that you're responsible for. And all of a sudden you just have to be like, uh, mm, what, what rocks are we studying in this geology? Class? <laughs> I, I, and then you wake up and you're like, no, I remember going to geology class. Okay. <laughs> I'm fine. But, um, I don't know the, no, the I, weight of responsibility, uh, is just wild. I have the, I have this almost the exact same dream too. In my mm. dream, frequently it's, I haven't gone to class all semester and it's getting near the last day of school. And I don't even know where, I, I don't know where the class is on campus. Yes, yes, yes. And I have to try and figure out where the class is. <laughs> and then like, do I go talk to somebody in registration to find out what, or is that, are people going to realize that I've been to class all semester? Mm -hmm. If I do that, then I wake myself up because this is one of the more annoying dreams that I have. So mm -hmm. this is one that actually frequently I will wake myself up from because I'll go, not this fucking dream again. Boom, <laughs> I, I have had that multiple times, the classroom dream, and it's also in in conjunction with some kind of wardrobe malfunction. And it's at minimum, shoes won't stay tied, hmm. but usually involving some kind of belt that won't stay on and pants that are coming off or something horrible like that. <laughs> it's oh, the worst. Every once worst. in a while, it'll get commingled with like the the locker combination that somehow I've forgotten. That it's like that feeling that you keep walking to this thing that you've gone to every day, multiple times a day, and it's always 18, 12, 36. And then you get there and it's just like, it's not working. And all of a sudden you're like, you have this feeling of like, did am I in the wrong place? Did someone change it on me? Why isn't this thing that is always supposed to, I, I think maybe life has this sort of um, repetition that either you take for granted or, um, by the time it gets to dreams, dreams are like, you know what? It's so random here that we're going to mess up every expectation that you have mm -hmm. uh, with this, uh, uh, not familiarity, but th with this, uh, this repetitive nature of your life, whether it's going to school or going to work or going to opening up the locker. I think that there's like things that go over and over in your dreams. So just like, we're going to, we're, we're, we're not going to enjoy this next uh, 27 minutes. <laughs> Okay. Uh, sorry. Wait. So, okay. Sorry. I lost the plot here. Is that the last? Did we do the last one? No, we got one more. Okay. Okay. Uh, is it Michael's last or? It's my last. Richard. Your last. Okay. 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 Oh, Michael's, Michael. Jeff's having a bad dream where he can't remember <laughs> <laughs> what he's supposed to be doing. Who's supposed yeah. to go next? The school dream. The school dream. The school this dream. is literally the school dream. So for <laughs> your final, Jeff, you will be... Ah. No, my last, my last choice is I was thinking about all of the different songs about dreams and dreaming. Mm. And I tried to pick my favorite one, mm -hmm. and there's a lot to choose from, but the one I kind of immediately thought of was the song Dreaming by Blondie. Oh, yeah. Just such a good song off of their yeah. 1979 album, uh, Eat to the Beat. Um, one of the more iconic drum tracks. Mm-hmm in rock history performed by legendary blondie drummer and drummer for many other bands including drama rama clem burke and if you've heard the song you know it it's just a super fast and very busy drum pattern and apparently that really is what drives the song and apparently he didn't know that was going to be the final recording of the track it was literally just like a, an early run through that he did of the drum part just to try and work out some things and see what happens if I try this and what happens if I try that. So it was intentionally busy and over the top and tons of fills. And that's the track they wound up using. So, you know, to his surprise, when he hears the final riff, the final mix, and instead of, you know, the more laid back, more kind of conservative version that he had laid down later, it's this like just super busy, super driving beat. Um, but I love this song. It really is about uh, the apparently Chris Stein Sorry, came up. I couldn't find any currently playing. Oh, shut up, Siri. <laughs> I'm having a dream that Siri is interrupting me. That's a bad dream. 
No, apparently Chris Stein, uh, the guitar player for Blondie, had the phrase, dreaming is free. And Debbie Harry just took that and ran with it and did a whole song based off of that. And, you know, I dreams are such that they're so vivid and they can mean so many different things. And so many people, like you said, Jeff, have songs that come to them in dreams. I mean, apparently Roy Orbison had the song In Dreams come to him in a dream. Oh, wow. Which is some bonkers meta bullshit mm -hmm. that I can't, even, I can't even begin to untangle. So there is this, always has been this connection between music and dreaming. And I think that's why there are so many songs that involve dreams and dreaming. Mm -hmm. And I could have picked Sweet Dreams Are Made of This or Dream On or, you know, Dreams by Fleetwood Mac. For whatever reason, this is my favorite dreaming song of all time. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just my my inherent love of Blondie, and I think they are an incredibly underrated band who do not get their their. I, I mean, I know they're in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and all of that, but I don't think they get their recognition for being as pioneering and influential as they should be. Mm -hmm. Were you were we talking about um, covers covers that we didn't know were covers and. Um... The Tide is High was one of those, I think. Yeah, I think we mentioned that at one point. Yeah, yeah that was a that was an old '60s uh, uh, ska song. Yeah, so between so Blondie may have introduced the world to maybe their first or m m the mall, mall going America to their first rap song and their first reggae <laughs> song, you know, or ska. Yes, song. Yeah. along with doing disco and post punk and yeah, power pop and yeah. just you name it, they basically did it yeah. in the late '70s, early '80s. And I know this is about dreams and not Blondie per se, but one thing that um, a dream also means is this kind of like hope and wish and aspiration for something that you do not have presently. And uh, that was a wonderful aspect of Blondie, I think, is here's this gorgeous woman who seemingly has it all. And yet a lot of right. her songs are about trying to get a guy she can't get or trying to you know be some place in the world that she she obsession and 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 the longing for some somebody or something that she doesn't have access to yeah i mean that those always cracks me up for a song like hanging on the telephone yeah where she's singing about like how she can't get this guy on the phone and she's trying to track him down and i'm just like if it's 1978 and debbie harry is trying to track you down yeah <laughs> you make yourself be found yeah you don't is hide it? from that absolutely okay so my I, dudes. yeah i was just say i just love the song I, I i love the you know the whole bridge part where it's like i never met him and i'll, ne I'll never forget him mm -hmm. kind of gets in this idea of you know is this person that she's talking about a real person or is it a figment of her imagination it's just a great song yeah uh i remember thinking that the production on that record and i think the, i don't know what the previous one like, was a self-titled previous album uh, were just immaculate, and then you listen to you read the producers, and they were saying these cokeheads couldn't do get their act together <laughs> for, for to do anything. They were just a mess. Um, Last album was Parallel Lines, by the way. Parallel Lines, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so hey, we did we we dreamed it, and it came true. No, we, we didn't. And, we we got one more dream left, Jeff. Oh God, I'm sorry. Who's who's his, who's, his waking nightmare continues. Yeah, it sure does. Um, oh, yeah, I put that on Richard. So uh, what is it, Michael? My last one is the flying dreams. And I have two very distinct types of flying dreams. Cool. I think flying dreams are these ones that are, um, uh, you know, born out of just uh, the most magical possible <laughs> experience. But I have two. One of them is how I remember to fly, and it's in a very specific <laughs> way where my, you go down and then like somehow you like will yourself up it's almost like being a bird but you don't flap your hands like a bird and it happens every once in a while where these dream where like i've convinced myself that i could pull this off in real life <laughs> uh pardon that um I guess there's someone doing some work outside. <laughs> the, the Beatles, the Beatles, yellow submarine is. is, is it sounds like an alpine horn, just, uh, just <laughs> like a recall. Uh, <laughs> like a recall uh, ad to start breaking out any second now. 
they're they're trying to fix some sort of awning or something outside and of course hell of a timing guys um but there's a feeling of flying that i'm convinced i can um will 100 percent i can recapture in the real world because i i know it's so instinct it's like okay you just you just catch it again and then you just fly you just <laughs> you're just gonna take off and the other weird um flying dream that i have is this weird car crash flying dream where i'm in a car driving on like a windy road and the car goes off the edge and it's terrifying oh. but the car never actually crashes the car just somehow skirts along and keeps like falling but falling high enough and long enough and this kind of floating aspect but it's terrifying but we're flying and falling and crashing at the same time and um i don't know if that's a reflection of, of my own um poor dri driving skills not that i've ever driven off the road <laughs> but it's one of those things where like it's the same sort of like i don't know what whatever the motion is of like catching the wind at the right time or um but it's a terrifying dream as opposed to like the other flying dream which is like oh i'm confident i can take off and this one's just like i'm slowly falling to my death kind of I'm crashing <laughs> but flying it is very strange and i i don't know flying dreams are um ah, just wild uh that those dreams i know i said i don't believe in sex in analysis but those are sex dreams mm. so okay um there you go yeah okay now i was having i, I was having sex with a car yes yes <laughs> All right, these have been dreams. These have been your dreams. I think they've been our dreams because I think some of these dreams, we've all dreamed these dreams. Um, let's go with school dream because I bet you there's viewers out there, listeners out there, if you've had the school dream, let us know. Let us know what it, the experience was. Was it uh, you're naked in front of a people at a school assembly? Was it you missed a class the whole semester? Um, so let's go with school dream. Let's go teeth dreams because that's, something let's go with the uh, money dreams and flying dreams all right these are, these are the ubiquitous dreams i feel like we all had all be having all right this has been the mount rushmore of dreams and dreaming i'm always jeff i'm richard i'm michael